Welcome to Keenan Keys. Here I have the Casio MT70 from 1982. It's a 4 octave mini keyboard with 8 voice polyphony and a storing system with barcode reader and melody guide. I really like the look and that's one thing I like about the early Casio keyboards in general. Casio wasn't only experimenting with different functions, they also were experimenting with different looks, at least until 1986. The MT70 is one of only 4 Casio keyboards with a barcode reader pen. This pen can read barcode scores, which are then stored to the internal memory. But what makes this keyboard, except for the VL5, even more special is the fact that they use sine waves instead of the more common square waves. The synthesis which Casio used for their first keyboards is called vowel consonant synthesis. Two digital square waves with different envelopes are manipulated by an analog filter. But the sound chips of this keyboard don't produce square waves, they produce sine waves. If you are a bit familiar with sound synthesis, you will know that there's one big difference between sine and square waves. The overtones. A pure sine wave has no overtones at all. So there's almost nothing that can be manipulated by a filter. We can assume that the sine waves in this case are not as pure as the one I've shown you. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been possible to create 20 at least slightly different presets. But some of the usual suspects are missing. There's no strings or violin sound, no harpsichord, guitar, clarinet or any kind of sharp sound. But that's a weakness and an advantage at the same time. The MT70 and all the other sine wave keyboards can be considered as organ specialists. The CT501 is a larger version of the MT70. It came out a few months later in early 1983. It has standard sized keys, two jacks for sustain and volume pedals and a built-in power supply. But it's otherwise exactly the same. Same sounds and functions. The 701 from 1981 is even larger. It has 61 keys, 8 note polyphony, a slightly different selection of instruments, 6 more rhythms and 2 effects sounds. And there is a fourth model existing. The CT1000P from 1982, which was Casio's first attempt to enter the professional market. It's an additive synth without accompaniment, but with an arpeggiator. I think I will have a look inside. This is way more complex than I thought. I can see five or six different boards. Unfortunately, no connectors, but I'm not going to desolder anything. divided into two pieces. On the first piece we can see the main chip, the NEC D7802G, which controls two identical sound chips, one for the chords and one for the main voice. Nevertheless, the polyphony is reduced from 8 to 4 when the accompaniment is switched on. The main chip also triggers the analog drums, which are on the second half of the main board. Here are the three trim pots for bass drum, snare and clave. I will clean the keys, buttons, the top piece and the key contacts. It runs on 5 D-size batteries. But this time I will use the power adapter. If you don't have the original and want to use a universal power supply, switch it to 7.5 volts and the polarity to negative center. 
There's also a mono line out which doesn't mute the speaker, a pitch control and a jack for the MS-1 barcode reader pair. We have 20 different presets. The small squares on the display are arranged the same way as the buttons. A black square shows the selected sound. The first sound is pipe organ. With vibrato. And delayed vibrato. Flute sounds also like an organ. Piano. Celesta. It's the same as piano, with a shorter decay and two octaves higher. Vibraphone is somewhere in the middle. Chorus. Funky. A bit disappointing. Synth bells. Woodwind. Full tibias. Oboe is a bit different. Jazz organ two has a nice attack. Synth press. This should have been named Wabres instead of the actual Wabres preset. Cosmic flute, one of my favorites. Banjo. and chimes. A nice thing is that the notes are re-triggered if you hold down the keys and push the preset buttons. We have 10 rhythms with tempo, start-stop and synchro-start. The drums consist of just 5 sounds. Bass drum, snare drum, clave, hi-hat open and closed. The open hi-hat isn't muted by the closed one. Every style has a different fill-in. You can change rhythms in between bars to add some extra fills. Some fills are a bit confusing. There are two chord modes. In single finger or Casio chord mode as they call it, you can play only three different chords. Major, minor with one key to the right and major seventh with two keys to the right. The chord is displayed. In fingered mode you can play every chord you like. But you will only hear three notes at a time. If memory is on, the chords will be held. Alternatively, you can switch to an arpeggio. The full bass pattern will only sound if you play a major, minor, major 7th or minor 7th chord. 
with all other chords you choose, the bass will only play the fundamental note. But what I like the best is that a single key works as well. If you press a chord quickly followed by the root note, the bass pattern remains the same. The octave down switch doesn't affect the accompaniment. But it's a pity that it only works when a chord mode is selected. The accompaniment sounds nice, but the bass is always a bit too late. You can hear it clearly at slow tempo. You have to change the chords a bit earlier. It's really not much fun to play that way. Especially if you want to play an additional melody with the right hand. So let's have a look at the two storing methods. The first one needs the barcode reader pen. Connect it and switch to MS mode. I won't go too much into detail, cause this works the same way as with the VL5, which I've shown you in one of my last videos. The only difference is that the MT70 can also read chord barcodes. Scan the first line. If scanned correctly, you will hear this click sound. The right speed is important. If you hear this drum sound, try again. Continue till the last line. Disconnect the reader pen and switch to play mode. Press reset to get to the beginning of the song and press memory play to start it. The lights show the melody and the display shows the played chords. You can change the tempo, instrument, FX or rhythm. You can play along with up to two voices. If you stop the tune with the memory play button and start it again, it will continue at the point where it stopped before, but the rhythm won't start again, cause the start song contains only one rhythm start command at the beginning. If you want the song to be repeated, press repeat during or before autoplay as many times as you wish the song to be repeated. You can also play the melody with the one key play buttons. Or start the accompaniment only to practice the melody. But there's also a melody guide for this purpose. This is a bit different from the later Casio melody guides and the Yamaha system. The song will start if you press the indicated key. The lights always show the next key. And you will only hear the indicated notes, no other key will sound. The accompaniment won't wait for you. And if you take a break, it gets a bit confusing. So it could be easier to practice without accompaniment first. The sequencer has also a manual mode. You can put in the informations for pitch, length and chords yourself. Switch to record melody mode. And delete the previous recording by pressing delete and reset at the same time. Press the keys for the melody in the correct order. You can store up to 345 steps. The sequencer will always play legato, so it could be necessary to insert a rest. If you make a mistake, simply press delete and go on with the correct note. When you're done, press end. Set the mode to play. Now you can play the melody with the one key play buttons. But that's it. Autoplay doesn't work. Switch to record chord mode and delete any previous content. The mode name may suggest that you can play any chord and record it. But you can only store chord names and duration. The actual pressed keys are not recorded. You have to switch to fingered or Casio chord mode. Hold down a chord or a single key and press a one key play button. This was the first step. You can store 201 steps. Every step has the length of two beats. That means you need two steps for one measure. And you can only change a chord on the first or third beat. Press the one key play button without holding down a chord for a chord rest. Unfortunately, you can't change the recorded chords afterwards. If you have made a mistake or want to insert an additional chord, you will have to start all over again.
The last thing to do is to store the timing of the melody notes. We have to do it manually by using the one key play buttons. Switch back to record melody mode. The accompaniment will only start if you insert a starting point on the melody track. Insert a rest if the melody should start after the first beat. Now play the melody in the correct timing using the one key play buttons. Press the one key play button one more time after the last note comes out. This determines the exact position where your song ends. For example, if you want to have a smooth ending, press the one key play button on the first beat of the next measure. If you have also inserted a chord step at this point, you will have a nice ending. Now let's hear the recorded song. If you want to make some changes, navigate through the steps with the back and forward buttons and delete or insert a note, a rest, rhythm start or return point. Press return 1 at the beginning and at the end of a passage and it will be repeated. You can use return 2 if you don't want the whole passage to be repeated. Press return 2 at the point where the new part begins. But this works only for the melody, not for the chords. You have to store every chord in the correct order. And now I guess it's time for a short multi-track recording. I like the overall sound of this keyboard. It's special. And I really like the look. I will definitely use it in some future recordings. And I recommend to use it with an amplifier. I'm not so happy with the accompaniment. I'm missing a separate volume control for the drums. And the short delay while changing the chords is really annoying. I prefer to use the sequencer to playback chords. It's not much fun to program it, but I'm happy that there is one at all. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.